27 years ago, a four-year-old Adu Mula underwent heart surgery to correct a congenital condition called a tetralogy of fallow. Now at the age of 31, he faces a second open-heart procedure to repair and improve the functioning of his heart. The doctors had said that there was something wrong with his heart, and they had it clearly said. He had also had symptoms of blue on his fingernails. En ja, ons weet het van die dag van geboorte af. In many of these cases, over the years, if there is no valve in the outflow tract of the right ventricle, although there is no obstruction, there is always a leaking back of blood from the lungs to the right ventricle. So what we've got here is a transophageal echo. The probe is in the stomach. Now any blood that flows away from the transducer is blue and blood flowing towards the transducer is red. And there should and essentially be no red. There should be essentially no red. And what you can clearly see here is the blue going into the pulmonary artery and then the red coming back towards the transducer, which is, means back into the right ventricle. The risk of an operation like this relates to the fact that it's a re-operation. It is fairly frequent in patients that are born with heart disease and the treatment of grown-up patients with congenital heart disease is a whole new dimension to cardiac surgery. Over the years, even complicated defects have been repaired, but it's only since those patients are surviving their childhoods that one is confronted with what happens to them in later years. A surgery of this nature can take anything from three to five hours, sometimes even longer, and requires a full team of highly skilled medical professionals. Our very own Dr. Moll scrubbed up and assisted. It's just much easier to do this when the heart's empty. And if I now make a hole, it's actually of very little risk. So, in essence, when you've deflated the heart yeah. by controlling the circulation, yeah. bleeding becomes irrelevant. Less, yeah, less relevant. Tetralogy of fallow is one of the more common heart defects in children, accounting for 10 to 15 percent of all congenital heart complications. We've cannulated the femoral artery and we're draining the femoral vein to support the circulation so that we can open uh, the sector heart free and control the bleeding that was encountered after the stenotomy. What the son is busy fighting away through here is 25 years of fibrous growth that's making it really hard to access the valve. So the challenge here at the moment is trying to create enough space to actually operate on the heart and yet not create enough tension to tear heart muscle or damaged muscle. Fine line. Adu's vital signs are closely and meticulously monitored throughout every stage of the operation. Well, we're two and a half hours into the operation, one or two complications, but no sign of a loss of energy and no lack of enthusiasm as we head towards actually repairing the defect. Adu's dysfunctional pulmonary valve is being replaced by a denatured bioprosthetic valve, thanks to technology that wasn't available many years ago. This is a homograft. It comes from human cadavers and it's also a pulmonary valve with a little bit of main pulmonary artery attached to it so it fits exactly into the spaces where it's needed. So you, you're replacing like tissue with like tissue? Exactly, exactly. And anatomically it fits really nicely. We're three hours into the procedure now. We've managed to reach the heart, which was a task in itself. Okay. And now we're replacing, not replacing, but rather repairing the patch, the hole in Adam's heart with a human pulmonary valve from a donor. Fascinating. With a procedure of this nature, it's often hard to predict how the body will respond during surgery. Surgeons need to be prepared for anything and must react swiftly but conservatively with the patient's best outcome at heart. We've decided to give the patient potassium which has temporarily stopped his heart and allowed us to uh, see better and do a better correction. Surgeries like this often take several hours to complete and require intense concentration from start to finish, not a task for the faint-hearted. 
that's potentially long. Do you have one coffee? Do you no, have I'm, a couple of Red Bulls? No, no, I'm going to have a coffee now. I'm definitely going to have a break. I have a nice coffee at Eva and I while the patient's warmed. Uh, we're nearly there. So this is the old valve. Can you see the remnants of the old valve? Actually, it's not a bad valve, the old valve. Like repairing a patchwork quilt, Dr. Foslu removes the old patch from Adu's heart chamber and will replace it to restore normal function. It looks quite tempting to put it here, but it's just that little bit that it may create a bit of tension. So That's the new patch you're going to use, Susanna, and that's what the patch looked like Most 25 likely, years ago. Yes. So. Most likely. This one will probably look the same in 25 years. <laughs> This was the patch used 25 years ago. It's calcified, it's hard, it feels like a piece of old leather. And the new homograph that is now being replaced is a much better option and will last him for the rest of his life. But that's what 25 years of medical advancement will give you. This is a day at the office unlike any other that we're used to. This has been highly complicated, so most days are much easier. And this is about as complicated as a reoperation can be. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing the experience with us. You're welcome. Well, that was both awe inspiring and humbling. Outside, commuters are heading home from work, sitting in the traffic, blissfully unaware of the amazing work that's going on in these theatres down by Susan and her team. Every day, they tackle life threatening procedures to save a life. The world needs more Dr. Susan Foster's.